They bring color and class to the catwalk, introducing new styles and trends. The body, L. McPherson. The blonde bombshell, Claudia Schiffer. The tall and slender, Naomi Campbell. Adorable all-American, Cindy Crawford. And Giselle Bunchen, the beautiful Brazilian supermodel. As one of Australia's best-known faces, Elle McPherson has managed to build a successful career out of her fame as one of the most recognizable supermodels. Since the beginning of her brilliant career, she has managed to launch her own lingerie line, as well as make fitness videos, and has launched various other merchandise. She has also managed to make the transition from modeling to acting, appearing in several films and television shows throughout the years. Her rise to fame came when she traveled to New York to spend a year modeling to pay for her university education. She was signed to Click Model Management in what was to be the beginning of a long and lucrative career. She gained a girl next door image in the early 1980s after appearing in a commercial for Tab Cola, which then led on to appearances in many well-known fashion magazines, often featuring on the cover. During the 80s, McPherson was dubbed one of the first ever supermodels, along with her colleagues Linda Evangelista, Christy Turlington, Naomi Campbell and Cindy Crawford. In 1995, McPherson, with Naomi Campbell and Claudia Schiffer, opened the first cafe that was owned and promoted by fashion supermodels. Located in New York's Rockefeller Center, the opening of the fashion cafe was one of the most heavily promoted events, closing New York's Fashion Week. The restaurant is decorated with fashion memorabilia, outfits associated with celebrities, framed fashion magazine covers and the like. And surprisingly, the menu was not confined to lean cuisine for models. Later that year, the three were also together on the catwalk, supermodeling slinky evening wear at an open-air fashion show in Rome. The show took place on the Piazza Navona and featured outfits by Valentino and Gianfranco Ferre. McPherson often collaborated with Valentino, appearing in his Haute Couture shows. She also attended the designer's final collection during Paris Couture Week in 1999, celebrating his amazing 45 years in the industry, of course wearing his design. Also a known humanitarian, McPherson, nicknamed The Body, has managed to incorporate her modeling with her charity work, having posed for photographers while she shopped in aid of charity to help U2 frontman Bono launch a new charity credit card that donates money to a fund fighting the effects of AIDS in Africa. The Australian supermodel used the card to shop at the Harvey Nichols department store lingerie section, which stocks her own luxury line, spending the first official red pound on the new card. In 2003, just 14 weeks after giving birth to her second child, she posed for a cast in a shop window on London's busiest shopping street. The cast was part of an interactive work-in-progress window display at Selfridge's department store, which organizers said would develop over two weeks, resulting in a sculpture immortalizing the body. The cast was then auctioned off to raise money for the children's charity, ARC. Elle McPherson Intimates was launched in 1990 and received instant success, growing into the largest selling lingerie line in Britain and Australia. In recent years, she launched another of her collections from her Intimates lingerie range, turning a London department store into a bedroom for boudoir. It's very sensual, quite sexual, in the sense that we have suspenders, um, garter belts, uh, corsets, quarter cup bras, demi cup bras. Um, and, it, and it relies on a lot of old-fashioned corseting. It's silks and satin and um, fine Austrian lace. And it's, it's fun. It's fun and it's comfortable. A nod to the influence burlesque now has on mainstream trends, the boudoir collection is a celebration of sensuality and seduction. And McPherson insists her lingerie is designed with all shapes and sizes of women in mind. Well known for her elegance and perfect measurements, McPherson, or The Body, has one of the most diversified portfolios, having taken an active role in the running of her own successful businesses to being a spokesperson for important issues worldwide. But for many, Elle McPherson will always be remembered as one of the first and most successful supermodels around.
Having appeared on more than 500 magazine covers, German supermodel Claudia Schiffer is one of the most recognizable faces in the world of modeling and fashion. Schiffer left school at age 17 after a talent scout from a modeling agency spotted her in a Dusseldorf disco. Six months later, she was on the cover of French Elle magazine. Later, she was chosen as the face of Guess, a role which catapulted her into the supermodel league. After appearing on a few more magazine covers, Schiffer's supermodel status was cemented after Karl Lagerfeld selected her as the new face of Chanel. This saw the beginning of a long collaboration between the designer and his muse. With her tall, slender figure, blonde hair, blue eyes and resemblance to Bridget Bardot, Schiffer went on to become one of the most famous supermodels the world has seen, alongside Australian Elle McPherson and Naomi Campbell. The three supermodels have walked the catwalk together on numerous occasions, modeling figure-hugging outfits for designers such as Valentino. They also became the first fashion supermodels to open a cafe chain together. The Fashion Cafe opened in New York in 1995 in what was one of the most heavily promoted events at the New York Fashion Week. More cafes opened up around the world in the years to follow. As her modeling career thrived with more magazine and catalogue appearances and catwalk shows for some of the biggest names in the industry, Schiffer had become big business. I'm very lucky because I'm a model and I have worked in the fashion industry for a really long time. I, you know, I know all the designers and it's really easy for me just to call them up and say, can you please send over what you got? And the thing is, they know my sizes, they know exactly what looks good on me, what doesn't and what I like. Her engagement to illusionist David Copperfield heightened media interest in what was one of the world's most famous showbiz couples. Copperfield, who was said to be one of the highest paid entertainers in the US, presented Schiffer with a four and a half million dollar engagement ring. The mid-90s also saw her become one in a series of supermodels to launch a fitness video. Her double video release, entitled Claudia Schiffer Perfectly Fit, was expected to sell 300,000 copies in Britain alone. Fashion modeling is one of the few businesses where women earn more than men, and for Schiffer that's an understatement, as her name is as big as the fashion houses she has represented. She was even lured away from a holiday for a four-minute appearance at a Valentino fashion gala in Rome, earning a reported $35,000 in the process. At the young age of 24, Schiffer had become the world's highest paid supermodel, calendar girl and cafe owner and also budding author with the launch of her first book, Claudia Schiffer Memories, a book dominated by photographs of the supermodel. Throughout her career, she has obtained contracts with some of the world's biggest brands such as Revlon, Fanta and Pepsi, appearing in advertising campaigns to attract a younger audience. She even modeled Pret-a-Porter designs in late 1995 in a fashion show held in Moscow's Radisson Slavonskaya Hotel in a bid to infuse the election campaign with international glamour. In 2007, Karl Lagerfeld played host to 600 of the fashion world's closest friends, colleagues and patrons at a private mansion in Paris during the Haute Couture Fashion Week for the launch of his Dom Perignon Onatec 1993 campaign, which featured his longtime muse Claudia Schiffer. Schiffer, who first worked with Lagerfeld for Chanel in 1990, was thrilled to be reunited with the fashion designer, photographer and fellow German native who shot in black and white and set Schiffer in various provocative situations. The photos of Schiffer were received with great enthusiasm. Today, she is still on the lips of all the high-profile designers who swamp her with all their latest couture outfits for red carpet events. And even though she is now a bit older than the average model, she is still seen at fashion events, whether it's parading down the catwalk for Yves Saint Laurent or attending as a guest. Claudia Schiffer will forever be a supermodel icon. She's recognized all across the world for her publicized dummy spits and controversies, but there's much more to supermodel and fashion icon Naomi Campbell. As one of the leading models in the industry who is recognized wherever she goes, Campbell's career has gone from strength to strength. Born in London and with black Jamaican and Chinese descent, 
Ritchie studied ballet at a young age and attended a number of schools. By the age of seven, she had appeared in music videos for big name artists and by 15 was spotted by a former model that was now head of a modeling agency. Since that chance encounter, she has gone on to become one of the biggest names to walk the catwalk and appear in advertising campaigns for high-profile brands and designers such as Versace, Yves Saint Laurent, Julian McDonald and Galliano. The iconoclastic Campbell achieved star status when she became the first black woman to grace the cover of Vogue Paris and Time magazine, eventually to appear on more than 500 covers. But it wasn't until the 1990s that she reached her supermodel fame, becoming a member of two supermodel teams. She joined with Christy Turlington and Linda Evangelista to form Trinity. Together they hit the runways and appeared in campaigns achieving major success. She was also a member of the Big Six alongside other supermodels like Cindy Crawford and Claudia Schiffer. Being in an industry where women dominate, Campbell was earning double or even triple what her male counterparts were and has obtained a fortune in the millions. After having modeled down the catwalk with Schiffer and Al McPherson for designers such as Valentino with his slinky evening wear and Versace's label Versus, which caters to the young and trendy, the British supermodel released her own book titled Naomi. Campbell signed copies of her book of photographs on the first day of the Milan 1997 spring-summer ready-to-wear fashion shows. The book was a personal photographic look back at her career and contains pictures of Campbell with other supermodels like Kate Moss and Linda Evangelista. It was also designed to raise money for children suffering from AIDS. Throughout her career, Campbell has also combined fashion and modeling with charity, working with designer Alexander McQueen, who put on a show to raise funds for AIDS charity Lighthouse. Campbell was one of the stars for the evening, modeling McQueen's creations and bringing her own touch of glamour to the evening. And in recent years, Campbell has proved that fashion is not all about looking good, but it's also about doing good. She helped to create and participated in Fashion for Relief, a charity project that supports the White Ribbon Alliance and combines a fashion show and auction to raise money for her chosen cause, so far having raised money for the victims of Hurricane Katrina and for problems related to childbirth. But it's for her accomplishments in the fashion business that she received the Outstanding Contribution Award at the Glamour Women of the Year Awards in 2006. As one of the it girls of fashion, Campbell is the first choice for many designers. She's been sent down the catwalk and open shows a number of times for Julian McDonald, often stealing the show in his gorgeous designs, and has struck poses in sumptuous evening gowns for French label Christian Dior. She even made a surprise appearance at Italian designer team Dolce & Gabbana men's fashion show in Milan in 2008. Being a close friend of the designers, she appeared on the runway dressed in a black bra with silk boxer shorts and matching kimono. Twenty years after her debut, she still lands the high-profile campaigns and catwalk shows thanks to her exciting attitude and perfect look. With her class and style, Naomi Campbell is still one of the most sought-after supermodels around. With her all-American look and that world-famous beauty spot, Cindy Crawford shot to fame as one of the world's original and most successful supermodels. Discovered at the age of 17, Crawford was entered into the Elite Model Management's Look of the Year competition, finishing runner-up. She then attended Northwestern University studying chemical engineering, but left in order to pursue her modeling career, which took her to New York. Her face began to appear on different magazine covers across the world and has now graced more covers than any other model, having been published on over 1,000, including Vogue, Elle and Cosmopolitan. Crawford has appeared in a number of campaigns and walked the catwalk for many iconic designers and design houses, such as Chanel and Karl Lagerfeld, Versace and Ralph Lauren. 
With her career flourishing, Crawford also became one of the first fashion models to bear all and pose in Playboy magazine. Not long after, MTV named her host of the music and fashion show House of Style. She hosted for six years and through the show was able to voice her opinion. Like a lot of models, she then went on to create her own exercise videos, publish books and enter into business partnerships. In the mid-90s, Crawford began her long-term advertising campaigns with soft drink company Pepsi. Appearing in a number of commercials earlier in her career, she was back 10 years later to promote the soft drink in a commercial that aired during the Super Bowl. In the Diet Pepsi commercial, Crawford plays an admirer of a good-looking guy that's strolling down the street while drinking a Diet Pepsi. For a number of years, Crawford was in a highly publicized relationship with actor Richard Gere. They were married for several years until their split in 1994. 97 saw her return to the catwalks of Milan for the Swiss Jeans Spring Summer Show. She was the star of the show, featuring in her only catwalk show in Milan for that season, unveiling a youthful collection of jeans and jackets. 1998 saw the introduction of her very own official website. The site is the only official site opened by Crawford in response to the countless unofficial Cindy sites that dominate the web. It featured never before seen photographs, audio and video, travel diaries, fashion news, health and beauty information, plus much more. As a personal favor to Italian designer Roberto Cavalli, who is known for his abundant use of animal prints, fur, and such extravagant materials as ostrich feathers, Crawford returned to the catwalk once again in 2002, parading three outfits for his autumn winter fashion show, and at the end of the show showed a low-cut cream evening gown under a long alligator skin trench coat. Crawford throughout the years has become a marketing man's dream, with sponsors queuing up to have their names linked with her. She's been a spokesperson for cosmetic companies such as Maybelline and Clairol, as well as watch manufacturer Omega. In 2006, she cut the ceremonial ribbon and joined Omega in celebrating the opening of their Rodeo Drive boutique. 2007 was a big year for Crawford as she celebrated Gianni and Donatella Versace's contributions to the world of fashion and entertainment, a design team that she modeled for in the beginning of her supermodel days. Doing a fashion show right after we had done George Michael, Freedom Video, and then Gianni had that song playing during the show. George Michael was at the show, and the girls that had been in the video, we all walked out together to that song, and it was kind of like the first supermodel moment. She was also awarded the Hollywood Style Icon Award at a star-studded evening that recognized the behind-the-scenes work of the beauty, fashion, decor, and lifestyle creators of the Hollywood look. Having started her career over 20 years ago, Cindy Crawford changed what it was to be beautiful and is still considered one of the world's top models and a legend in the world of fashion as one of the original supermodels. Having brought back the curvaceous figure to the catwalk, Brazilian Giselle Bunchen is the face of today's supermodels and the first choice for many of the world's top designers. According to reports by Forbes magazine, Bunchen is the highest paid model in the world, making her one of the wealthiest women in the fashion industry. She has put her face to more than 20 international labels and has appeared on the cover of more than 500 magazines. As a teenager, she joined a modeling course with her sisters, and the following year she was discovered and placed into modeling competitions. She was placed second in the Elite Look of the Year competition and received fourth place at the World Contest in Ibiza. By 1996, she had moved to New York, where her modeling career took off after her introduction at Fashion Week. By the late 90s, her face was on the cover of some of the world's most famous fashion magazines and in recent years has broadened her exposure by making appearances in other publications such as Time magazine and Forbes. Bunchen is now among the most famous supermodels in the world and has become one of the most powerful figures in the fashion industry, strutting international catwalks and appearing in print and TV ads for Victoria's Secret and other fashion labels. 
She began modeling for the iconic lingerie brand Victoria's Secret in the late 90s, and in 2000 was recruited as one of the Victoria's Secret Angels, which are the world-renowned representatives of the brand. Hi, this is Giselle. I'm here today at the Victoria's Secret photo shoot, shooting a new Victoria's Secret fantasy bra. In 2005, she was the lucky angel to present the multi-million dollar fantasy bra. And last year, Tara wore it, and before Heidi wore it, so I feel very honored. This is the 2005 Sexy Splendor Fantasy Bra, and the reason why it's called Sexy Splendor is because it's the name of this 101 karat stone. For the ultimate in lingerie luxury, Victoria's Secret $12.5 million Sexy Splendor Fantasy Bra worn by Bunchen featured 101 karat flawless pear-shaped diamond, 2,900 parvi set diamonds, 22 ruby gemstones, and was crafted in 18 karat white gold. The fantasy bra was created exclusively for Victoria's Secret by a Paris-based jeweler and took over 300 hours to create. She has appeared in the famous Victoria's Secret swimsuit catalogue, which is sent out to millions of people worldwide, and was also on hand in 2006 to accept from Hollywood's honorary mayor, Johnny Grant, the key to the city, which was presented to the Victoria's Secret models. However, 2007 saw Giselle end her long and successful relationship with the lingerie company in order to pursue other options. She has had a long-running collaboration with Brazilian label Culchi, which have become best known for securing the supermodel for their campaigns and catwalks. She has been the main attraction at a number of catwalk shows over the years, bringing with her hundreds of fans and journalists, all trying to get a peek at their own hometown superstar. It has been described that Giselle's supermodel presence on the runway has helped to keep the Brazilian brand's DNA alive. She was also chosen as the star of the ad campaign and collection for the Italian eyewear company Luxottica Group, who kicked off the first American campaign for their Vogue eyewear line in 2006. But not just a model, Giselle also launched her own line of sandals, which became the most sold Brazilian sandal in the world. In mid-2008, she presented her new collection of summer sandals to journalists in Berlin. The collection, known as G2B, has been created together with designer Mark Ibanema. Part of the profits from this collection will even go towards the preservation of groundwater sources in Brazil. She's modeled for Dolce & Gabbana and was one of Galliano's catwalk queens when celebrating Christian Dior's 60th anniversary. So it seems that Giselle Bunchen is definitely one of the most sought-after models, so it's no wonder she's one of the most successful and highest-paid supermodels in the world.